Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar for today to discuss how to stop wasting your marketing money and take a deep dive into StoryBrand to help you get there. My name is Tom Young. I'm the CEO of Intuitive Websites, and I'm going to be introducing Neil Anderson here in just a second. Carrie Ann LeFew is also with us from Intuitive Websites. Uh, the attendees are just rolling in, so let me give you just a second for that to complete, and then we'll get started. So today we're going to be looking at a deep dive at StoryBrand, and you do have the ability to ask questions through the chat box and through the questions section in the webinar on your control menu. I'll be monitoring those questions, and then as we take a break um, from the presentation, we'll take your questions and Neil will respond to those um, directly. Um, I'd like to really quick take a look at our four-step process. Many of you have been to our webinars in the past, or maybe you've heard me speak as a Vistage speaker. And the four-step process is a key part of how we approach digital marketing. And in our four-step process, it starts with strategy. And um, uh, we have a slide to show you that, that four-step process. And I wanted to, to take a look at um, where StoryBrand fits here, because StoryBrand is really, in many ways, the fuel that drives the four-step process. Because regardless of what you're doing with your marketing, it all comes down to your messaging, especially as you attract people to your company and your brand. And our four-step process starts with strategy. This is your business strategy. This is what is all about the value you bring to, you, to your, uh, your customers and your prospects. But then that value has to be communicated. And the companies that do the best job at communicating strategy are the ones that get the most leads and see the most growth and get the most market share. And StoryBrand is at the heart of that because people relate to stories. Neil's going to talk about that. Step three is inbound marketing, which are the tactics then that are used to communicate that message from, from SEO to email marketing to social media to blog posts to, and on and on. Those are all the tactics. And then finally, what you'll see in companies that do story brands see this, you'll see greater levels of ROI, greater levels of sales growth, and the ability to, to, to um, track and record all of this activity through your digital tools, whether it be Google Analytics or HubSpot or whatever tool you're using, and that's step four. So this is our four-step process, and StoryBrand, as I said, is the fuel for this. So with that, I'd like to introduce Neil Anderson, and it's a pleasure to have him here with us today. Neil is a uh, partner with Chief Outsiders, 25 years of experience in marketing, uh, and he is, is definitely a, a master at marketing, marketing strategies. Um, companies that are lucky enough to work with Neil see strong, solid growth, and, and are much more likely to hit their, their revenue goals. He works with different size companies from small businesses to large publicly traded companies. And we've partnered together on many projects. We bring Neil in to work with our clients, and he's brought intuitive websites in to work with his clients. And we have several really good success stories in that combination because, you know, once again, you've got to have that four steps in that process. If you have a great strategist like Neil, you have to have the team that will execute the tactics, and that's what we do at Intuit Websites. Um, Neil builds and mentors marketing teams. He works directly with CEOs and marketing leaders, and he looks very closely at industry segments and how those segments are tied to company growth. Um, and he has a process through Chief Outsiders, which is extremely powerful and, and, and gets great results. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Neil, and we're going to dive in specifically to StoryBrand and learn how your messaging <laughs> and your use of stories can lead to sales growth. Take it away, Neil. Yeah, thanks very much, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here and thanks to everybody for um, who's attending. I'm pretty excited to share this information with you because I think it, uh, it's, it's not just about you know, the message on your website, it's really how you describe uh, what it is you do and the value that it brings to your customers. So um, super excited to, to take this on. So as this slide uh, talks about it, as the title of the webinar, you know, most companies just waste a tremendous amount of money on their marketing. And when I tell you why, I think you're going to feel it in your bones. <clears throat> you know, you, um, you see a lot of websites that look like this, and this is not just about website messaging, but I'm going to use this as an example. You see the beautiful, the beautifully designed logo up in the upper left-hand corner. And then you learn more in our mission and our home and about and that very cute and clever line in the middle that says your journey starts here. Artisan, innovative solutions. And then you wonder, 
what the heck does this company actually even do? <laughs> is it a travel company? Is it a photography company? Um, not sure. Their logo doesn't tell me. Their heading in the uh, middle of the website doesn't tell me. The fact that they're artisans and innovative and they provide solutions doesn't tell me. And so I'm not very likely to uh, click on one of these uh, call to action buttons. <clears throat> People really only buy products after they read the words that make them want to buy these products. And in this talk, I'm going to explain why almost all of us have been talking to our customers the wrong way and how if we keep doing it wrong, we're going to lose to the competition. I'm also going to show you a framework that you can use to clarify your message so that your customers start to listen. And the framework will definitely change the way you talk about your products and your services. It might even change the way you actually do business. But before I talk about the framework and before I show it to you, I want to explain just a little bit about how the human brain actually works. Your customers' brains are basically designed to do two things above everything else. The first thing their brains are designed to do is to help them survive and to thrive. This means that everybody's always looking around for information that will help them simplify life, make more money, meet new friends, and anything else that will increase their standing in the world. The problem is the brain is also trying to do something else. And it's trying to conserve calories. And in order to process all the information around us, we have to burn calories. So if you think about that slide that I just showed you, you have to really burn some calories to try to figure out what that company does. So what all this means is that if we don't position our products and our services, in such a way that they clearly can help people survive or even thrive, then people will start to tune us out. So every time you start talking about your business or somebody goes to your website, it's almost as if they've started running on a treadmill. And the more confusing you are, the less likely they'll be to pay attention. Imagine every piece of information that you give somebody about your company is sort of like an eight pound bowling ball. And you know, you can hand them that bowling ball and they can probably hold on to it without too much trouble. But then how many bowling balls do you think someone can actually hold? Maybe two, you start to give them three and all of a sudden they start dropping all of them, which is the equivalent to someone just sort of tuning you out and moving on to the next website, right? And that's what's happening to your sales. People want simple, relevant information, and we hand them bowling balls. In other words, if you confuse, you'll lose. Our brand needs to explain how we can help somebody survive and thrive, and we need to do it in such a simple way that people don't have to burn a lot of calories to understand how. So, <clears throat> The story brand framework is the best way to compel a human brain using the power of story. The average person spends about 30% of their time daydreaming, except when they are engaged in a story. If you think about you know, a really good movie that you've been to recently, um, probably on Netflix and not in the movie theater. Uh, the, the one time that you don't daydream is when you're fully engaged in a story. And the story brand seven part framework acts as a filter that you can use to help clarify your message so that customers will actually listen. So the framework looks a little bit like this. This is the story brand sort of messaging framework or the messaging filter, if, if you will. Now, <clears throat> I have to warn you, I'm going to ruin movies for you forever uh, because stories are very formulaic. And they've been that way for 2,500 years. So <clears throat> with each element of this framework, you're going to have a big realization about how to brand your business, how to connect with your customers, and how to stop wasting money on marketing. Are you ready? Every story starts with a character, and it's a character who actually wants something. There's two mistakes both screenwriters and brands make when it comes to creating a story. Number one, either they don't clearly define the something that their customer wants, or number two, 
They talk about too many things that they offer that a customer might want. If you wrote a movie about Jason Bourne wanting to, number one, know who he is, number two, lose 30 pounds, number three, marry the girl, number four, run a marathon, number five, adopt a cat, you'd lose the audience pretty quickly. Why? Too many bowling balls. The audience wouldn't be able to follow the plot. So the first principle <clears throat> for story brand marketing is when you agitate a customer's desire, they enter into the story your brand is telling. <clears throat> so then defining the something that our customer wants gets them excited, but no story starts until the hero, which is your customer, encounters a problem. When we define something that's keeping our hero from getting what they want, we set the hook. Now the customer is curious and they're wondering whether or not we can help them solve their problem. <clears throat> so if you stop talking about your customer's problems, they stop paying attention to your brand. Imagine a movie in which the hero's problem is resolved within the first 15 minutes. And then the rest of the movie is all about them going through life just as normal. That wouldn't be a very interesting movie, would it? The problem or the challenge the hero faces is the most important element in a story to keep the audience engaged. For this reason, we should never stop talking about the customer's problems. The second we stop talking about their problems, the story is over and the customer loses interest. So if you stop talking about your customer's problems, they stop paying attention to your brand. That's the second story brand marketing principle. So now that we've looked at the customer or hooked our customer by agitating their desire and defining a problem that's keeping them from getting what they want, they may be feeling a little helpless. For centuries, storytellers have been bringing in another character at this point in the story to help them find their way. For the story brand framework, we call this character the guide. In Hunger Games, Hamish played the, uh, the guide to Katniss. In Star Wars, both Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi play the guide to Luke Skywalker. The guide has one job in the movie, and it's to help the hero win the day. For this reason, we recommend that your brand never plays the hero. Your brand should always play the guide. So story brand marketing principle number three, your customer is the hero of the story, not you, not your brand. Think about it. Every person wakes up as the hero in their own story. And when your brand comes along acting like the hero, they don't identify with you. People aren't looking for another hero. They're looking for a guide. In the book, Building a Story Brand, Don Miller explores the different ways a brand can position themselves as a guide. For now though, just know that when you position yourself as the guide in your customer's story, they feel like they finally found the help that they've been looking for. So again, your customer is the hero of the story, not your brand. At this point in our customer's story, they likely uh, want what we have to offer. And yet they aren't gonna make a purchase. Why? Because for the first time in their journey, they feel they're at risk. If they buy something, they could lose. They could lose their money, they could lose their time, they could lose their pride. And most customers aren't gonna take that chance. So we wanna give them an easy plan to help lessen the sense of risk. It's not unlike having to cross a raging creek just up from a waterfall. Very few people are gonna to wanna to cross the creek but if they see three stepping stones in the creek, they're more likely to cross. So we've got to give our hero a plan, a simple one. 
your customer needs an easy step-by-step -step plan to move forward or they won't. As a brand, we wanna give our customer baby steps they can take to do business with us. It might be as simple as download our software, go through our short tutorial, enjoy the results. Just listing three or four steps your customer can take to enjoy the results that your product can create in their lives greatly increases the chance they'll take the leap. So your customer needs an easy step-by-step -step plan to move forward or they won't move forward. But our hero still needs one more thing before they'll step fully into the story. They need us to call them to action. Heroes are reluctant to take action on their own. They have to be forced to take action. A bomb has to go off. A letter has to arrive in the mail. A couple has to meet and fall in love, but fail to get each other's contact information. Something happens that forces the hero to move. The reason this is true in stories is because it's true in life. Story brand marketing principle number five, unless you clearly call people to action, they won't take action. People don't take action unless they're challenged to take action. There should be one obvious button to press on your website and it should be a direct call to action. If your website has a bunch of different links in the upper right hand corner, you're gonna lose sales. Brands tend to make two critical mistakes in this area of their marketing. They don't make their calls to action clear or they, don't, or they have so many vague calls to action that the customer can't figure out what you want them to do. Some of you have get started on your website. Get started doing what? Ladies, if a man walked up to you at a cocktail party and said, you wanna get started? How would that make you feel? Confused? Maybe a little icky? <laughs> what does get started actually mean? Use words like buy now, schedule an appointment. Your customers will understand what it is you want them to do. The point is to give customers something they can clearly accept or reject. Don't delude that call to action with a bunch of other random links and options. Unless you clearly call people to action, they won't take action. Principle number five. Unless we tell our customers what can be won or lost on whether or not they do business with us, the story has no stakes. And a story with no stakes is not interesting. So principle number six, customers want us to cast a vision of what their lives can look like if they use our products or our services. When we show them what their lives can look like, if they use our products or services, they buy our products and services in order to achieve that future state. And the opposite's also true. <clears throat> Heroes run toward the light and they run away from darkness. We also have to show our customers the consequences of not doing business with us. If nothing can be lost in a story, there is no story. Imagine a story about a hero that has to disarm a bomb, except that 10 minutes into the movie, we find out the bomb is a dud and that nobody's actually at risk. Is there a story? No, because there's now no consequence as to whether the hero takes action or not. So principle number seven, if there are no consequences for not doing business with you, then there's no reason to do business with you. This is a story. It's nearly every story you see in the movies or read in a book. A character has a problem. The character meets the guide that gives them the plan and calls them to action that either ends in success or failure. So what does this mean for your brand? <clears throat> well, it means unless you can answer these seven questions, customers probably aren't listening to you. So where do we go from here? Everybody in the room needs to create what we call a brand script, and it looks like this. 
We have to understand what our customers want. What are the customer's external, internal, and philosophical problems? Have we positioned our brand as the guide to the hero? And have we created a clear plan for the hero to win the day? Are our calls to action, or CTAs as we call them, are they clear? Have we helped our hero imagine how we can improve their lives? And have we identified the consequences we are helping our hero to avoid? So when you answer all of those questions in a, in a systematic, organized process, your marketing message would look something like this. Now this is all uh, ipsum lorem, so it's not real verbiage, but you basically have a character who has a problem. There's some kind of a villain, not necessarily a person, it might be a thing. <clears throat> maybe they, um, maybe they are looking for a, a weight loss program, right? So their external problem is that they can't seem to lose weight. Their internal problem is that they're sad and frustrated and feel bad that everything they try just doesn't, doesn't work. And the philosophical problem is that it shouldn't be so hard. It's just not just, it's not right that it's so hard. <clears throat> and then they have to meet a guide. <clears throat> the guide has to show them empathy. They understand what it's like to not be able to lose weight, but they also have authority and they have examples of how they've helped people lose weight. It's just an example. So they give them a plan. What's the process? They sign up for the program, maybe it's uh, the Weight Watchers program, and they have an agreement that they can stay in that program for a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time and lose a certain amount of weight. And they call them to action. Say, download the program now, or set up your weight loss um, program in the software. And if they can't convince the person to hit the buy now button, there might be a transitional call to action download this uh, free document that describes the 10 things you knew, need to do or the five things you need to do to lose weight. And then they, they paint a picture of what that success uh, actually looks like. How is that future state gonna benefit them? How are they gonna survive and thrive in their new, uh, you know, lost weight future state? And then what's gonna happen if they don't do it? They're gonna continue on this path of being unhappy, being sad, being frustrated, and having that despair over not being able to lose weight. So that's just an example of how you, you, when you fill out a brand script, you have seven messages that customers will actually listen to. Why? Because you will have entered into their story. In fact, more powerfully than that, you'll even be guiding them into a story. So a couple um, examples here. Here's a sort of a before, I'm gonna show you a before and after uh, version of a website. <clears throat> and if you look at the upper left-hand corner, <clears throat> you have several options here. You could call the corporate number, you could call the financial number, you could call the auction number, you could call the insurance number, or you could send them an email. So you've got lots of choices to burn your calories here on what to do. And then as you move to the right, and generally uh, we've got a lot of scientific studies that have proven what eye, uh, eye tracking pattern uh, recognition looks like <clears throat> from a scientific perspective. And normally your eye starts at the upper left, moves in a Z pattern to the right, down across the middle of the screen, and then over to the right again, and then it bounces around to different hot spots that capture your attention. So here we've got a company that's called Equify. Now, the name of the company doesn't tell us what they do. And in that situation with good marketing, if you have a name that doesn't tell someone what you do, then you need to have a tagline that does tell them what you do. So this company has chosen as their tagline, we strengthen your business. 
well, that's nice, but it still doesn't tell me what you do. So now as I'm bouncing around the page in my Z pattern, because I haven't figured out what I should do at the top, so I start coming down the middle of the page and I see that they have asset services. And I'm not exactly sure what asset services are, but they tell me that I'll realize confidence in my assets. And then they've got a message about their next auction. Whoops, sorry. Uh, we've got a message <clears throat> about their next auction. We've got a message about building my business with Equify. And then it looks like we've got a book that we need to read down here to sort of help figure out what it is we do. But by that time, I've burned too many calor calories. I've been handed too many slippery bowling balls and I've just decided to move on. So if you take this same <clears throat> company and now you have two clear calls to action, you either view inventory or you call right now and as you come down, you understand that there are five different ways that Equify can make my company stronger. They work closely with business owners to greatly improve cash flow. Hmm, protect me from risk, maximizing my value and creating peace of mind. I like peace of mind. And then very clearly they tell me they do, sorry, they do specialized commercial lending, they do real estate lending, they have commercial insurance services, they do heavy equipment auctions, and they have appraisal services. So it's much clearer to me, they're starting to engage me in their story. This is just one quick example of a, of a before and after. What I also wanna take you through <clears throat> are some uh, examples of best practice in uh, story brand messaging uh, for a website. So this is an imaginary business uh, that sells e-bikes. You know, e-bikes are really uh, popular these days because they give you a little assist uh, when you're going up a hill. Uh, but as your eye starts in the upper left-hand corner of this website, you read that the name of the company is Circuit e-bikes. And they've got a nice little logo there, but Circuit e-bikes tells me what they do e-bikes right and as i move across in a z pattern i get to the upper right hand side and i see a very clear call to action find a dealer boom they're going to point me to a dealer where i can go look at an e-bike or buy an e-bike and then they give me sort of an aspirational identity as i follow the z pattern down to the middle of the page be the leader of the pack well, that's something I'd like to be. And then I do that by getting on a revolutionary new bike. And again, a reminder of my call to action, find a dealer. And then as I get to the lower left-hand corner, now all of this that you're looking at on the screen, if you were on this website, is all above the fold, which is an old newspaper term for, um, when you first buy the newspaper at a newsstand and you pick it up to look at it, what do you see before you actually fold open the newspaper and see the whole page? So we see some direct benefits that are attractive to me. I could help save the environment. I could save money. I could save time if I get on an e-bike. Then here's an example of stakes. If you remember <clears throat> the story brand framework, one of the clear um, principles is describing what the value is, but also describing what happens if you don't take the call to action. So here they give you the philosophical problem right away. Life is too short to sit in traffic. So it's, it's simply not just it's not fair. It's not, uh, it's not okay to sit in traffic. Why? Traffic's no fun. Don't be held back. You were designed for more. And again, find a dealer. So they're describing very clearly what happens if you don't buy the e-bike. Here is 
the picture of success, that future state <clears throat> that you need to describe if your customer, if your hero actually takes the action that you want them to take. They're going to save time. They're going to take back control of your life with a circuit e-bike. You could avoid parking hassles, ditch the parking meter and park wherever you want when you get on an e-bike. Save money on gas, hop on your e-bike for even half your trips and enjoy a significant dip in your gas expenses. Or save time, right? You could arrive on time, you could arrive earlier, you could impress your boss. Oh, that's something that appeals to you, right? You wanna, that's something people want. <clears throat> impress your boss when you're the first one at the office every day because you haven't been sitting in traffic. And then again, another very clear reminder of what you're being asked to do. This is your call to action. Click on this button and find a dealer. Very simple, not very many words. Now, <clears throat> here is a, sh a screenshot from the website that describes you, the guide. You are the guide to your hero and you're showing empathy. We don't just care about bikes, we actually care about you. So you're showing empathy on the left and you're showing authority on the right. More than 20,000 happy riders, more than 5 million gallons of gas saved, more than 100,000 commute hours saved. So the, the clear um, message that you want to convey when you're talking about yourself is one of empathy and authority. So the, these are um, some clear examples of you know, what you can do uh, in your messaging when you follow the story brand framework. So I wouldn't be a marketer if I didn't give you my own three-step plan. So as an example, if you wanted to work with Neil on a story brand framework for your business, you'd simply schedule a free consultation by going to this link. You'd receive from me a detailed proposal after we had that consultation. And then you'd execute clear messaging throughout all your marketing and grow your business and buy a boat or something else that might be fun. So if you're uh, an intuitive website customer, or you have a relationship with Tom and his team, uh, you can start there and talk to Carrie, talk to Tom. They'll pull me in as needed. Um, if uh, you want to come to me directly, uh, I'll work with you and we'll pull Tom in if we need to execute on some of these things. But uh, that's basically the end of my uh, presentation. And I would leave by putting these words on the screen. If you confuse, you'll lose. And then at this point, uh, Tom and I would be happy to uh, take any, any questions that, uh, that you might have about the story brand framework or anything else. Excellent presentation, Neil. And we do have some questions to get to. If you have a question, you can put it in the Q&A section or in the chat section of the, the uh, Zoom um, control panel. What, what, I, I, what I love about what you just presented is the simplicity of this. If, if you really think through it, it can take, it takes what somebody might have as a, in their marketing plan or whatever is a very complicated approach and it just simplifies it. And I love the clean approach of the, of the websites where the message was so direct and so simple and clear. And I also think that it's a great overlay to your current marketing plan. So many of you already have a marketing plan, you're executing it right now. StoryBrand can came, come in and really simplify and give a lot more direction to that plan. Um, and the stakes are high right now. You mentioned stakes, Neil. Well, the stakes are high for many businesses as you know, we're transitioning in today's uh, COVID world, right? So uh, let me give you a few questions here. And, uh, and, and like I said, feel free to put in more questions, folks, if you, if you uh, would like to get an answer from Neil. Um, and this is a question I actually hear in my Vistage talks quite a bit. And, um, it is, you know, how do you use StoryBrand when you have multiple target markets and multiple segments? And, and really quick, you know, I get the question all the time, when, when do I need to have a new website 
for this part of my company. And I tend to say that, well, when your target market is so segmented that someone will be put off by your current website or it won't make any sense to their offering, then it's time for a new website. And uh, I would imagine it's similar with, with StoryBrand. What are your thoughts, Neil, about companies that have multiple and differentiated market spaces? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of questions in, in there and I'm seeing in the chat and I'm seeing in the questions, a lot of the questions um, <clears throat> are around how do you take a business that has multiple segments, um, like in a healthcare uh, company, for example, or you have multiple products. And the story brand framework is intended to, to be able to be used. I, I've been doing marketing and messaging for, for decades and I've used a lot of different frameworks and I still do use different frameworks. Um, but the story brand framework, the way you would approach it is you, you, um, if you have a small company and you offer one product, you can probably do one story brand framework. If you have a larger company and you have multiple divisions, you could do a story brand, uh, brand script, for each division, and then you can go down deeper and do a story brand brand script for every single product that you sell or every single service that you offer. But you've got to, um, at some point, be able to roll those up into a simple, um, into a simple brand script for the overall corporate uh, structure. Now, that's not always easy. I have one client uh, that I've been working with for the last uh, two and a half years. And after working with them for about six months or eight months, it uh, became very clear that they needed to split the business into either two completely separate divisions or two completely separate companies because one division served government contracts and was basically a staff augmentation business. And the other division sold very innovative technology implementation. So they were, they were both consulting businesses and that's what was common amongst them, but they had such different messaging and such different target audiences. They were really, um, they, their growth was accelerated when they were able to split their businesses in, into two different businesses. So, so you sometimes see that situation, um, but essentially the, the answer to that question about different segments, different products, different services, different uh, offers, is you create multiple brand scripts. Yes, and, and it, it's such a great point. Um, um, I think that the brand script, and you said this, Neil, it has to relate so much to the need of the hero in the story, your target market. If, if you have multiple target markets and you start down the path of a brand, brand script, and that brand script doesn't connect with the target market, then you need a different brand script. Now, people will understand that you have different products and services, right? Overall, and, and, and the example you showed does a really good job of this, Neil, it, overall, you do have to have one corporate message. And, and the, the first example we saw, had they had four or five different service offerings. So if you dig deeper, you'll see the brand script for each of those target markets. Um, to, yes, there will be, this recording will be available. It'll be put on the resources on our website and it'll also be emailed to you. Um, uh, let me take, an, I'll take another question here. And this is a really interesting one on, um, on SEO and story. Yep. And, um, so, so, you know, I, yeah, SEO people, <laughs> they want lots of content and Google wants lots of content, right? And so how do you keep it simple? when the SEO folks want lots of content. And I think that in some ways, story brand drives content. So it's a win-win because yep. you can't have a lot of depth of content. I think it's more about how you organize that content and how you structure your website to organize the content than it is about people feeling like they're overwhelmed. In fact, that story brand template, Neil, that you showed, wouldn't that drive like hundreds of blog posts? I mean, lots and lots of content, right? So, so Tom, you hit the nail right on the head. And I love this question from Troy um, because I see this all the time. I work with lots of different SEO um, companies, intuitive websites being one of them and others uh, with uh, where my clients have already engaged um, SEO partners and they're always looking for content. You, but Tom hit the nail on the head. You, you, 
organize your content in things like blogs. So you could, um, you, you don't want to stuff your uh, pages, your principal website pages. You don't want to do what they call keyword stuffing on those because then the plate, the pages become cluttered with text. So what you do is you point people to the blogs and then you stuff the blogs with keywords. So that's basically the way you answer that. And not just blogs, that's just one example. You might have white papers, you might have eBooks, you might have videos. Don't forget, Google is now, you know, really going after video content and uh, yeah. you know, other, other forms of content. So there, there is a way, marketing, uh, digital marketing is changing all the time. And uh, that's why you need a good uh, agency partner to keep up with it, uh, trying to do it all internally is just um, craziness, I think. But um, It is, and, and you know, it's interesting too, because it, I think keeping the, the framework under the story brand concepts is critical, which is keeping the focus on the hero, which is your, your customer, your target market. So, so there's another question from, from Monica, and I love this question too, is that, that yes, yeah, sometimes CEOs and executives have a hard time buying off on this. And I think that at the heart of that, is because they're so tied up with their own process. They, and, and Neil said, they think they are the hero. They think that it's all about them as they run their business. And you know, it is, that's true. It is about them, but this is about growth and about messaging to your target market. So the CEO has to learn to step outside of that framework and understand that this is a marketing principle and concept. And to do that, let them know this, the best marketers on the planet are the ones can, that can embrace their customers as the hero of the story and get rid of themselves as the hero of the story. And it's hard to do that because as individuals, we're wired to know what's in our own heads, but get outside yep. of their head, get inside the head of the customer. If you could get them to read this book or watch this webinar, Neil, and that'd be, that would be great for them, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, this, um, it's really about getting them to, uh, to buy into the concept of the story brand uh, framework. Uh, and they also struggle with what I call the curse of knowledge, right? The CEO of the company, he understands every detail of what that company does and he understands the value in every detail, but you just can't um, put all that detail <laughs> up on your homepage. You have to have a way to engage the customer uh, into the story. And yeah, and I think real. that that for for folks like Monica, you know, do story brand with your CEO. You know, just you be the guide. Buy him the book. <laughs> yeah, buy them. <laughs> so you know, you, you, yeah. So Monica, you be the guide. Give the, the get help the CEO get to where they want to get. You know, some CEOs want sales growth. Some want better ROI. Some want to improve their bottom line, their margins. Find out what they want to improve, and then use story brand concepts to help them get there. And then I think you'll get the sign in and the buy off on your marketing initiatives. Another great question from Ben, Neil, and this is actually, this will be a great one for you because of your experience leading teams. So how does story brand concepts go beyond the website into sales calls, um, sales um, funnels um, and other kinds of, of campaigns, LinkedIn campaigns, for example, and that sort of thing. So, so I, would, um, I would posit that you can use a brand script for any type of communication where your goal is to actually persuade someone to actually do something. So you could fill out that uh, brand script that I, I shared earlier uh, for a sales presentation. You could do it for an email that you're writing. You could do it for, um, you know, an internal company presentation that you have to give. Uh, you could do it for a piece of collateral that you're you're trying to put together, and eventually, when you do this brand script exercise enough, it only it doesn't take that long to do a brand script. It takes a while to to get skilled at doing them really well, but your your brain becomes sort of wired to work this way, um, whether it's in a conversation, or a sales presentation, or a website. Um, an elevator pitch. I mean, there's, there's a, there's a science to developing that elevator pitch. And, and it, it's interesting too, because we remember these things. Like for example, people will remember a movie for decades. I mean, you can remember when the first time you saw Star, Star Wars and, and, and you know, you still remember 
all those things, but how often do we remember the sales call we just had or the website we just visited? So the story, the story engages the part of the brain that can make us remember things. And, and that's something that Don Miller talks about oh, quite a bit about in his book. Um, another question from Ali on CTAs. Great question, by the way. And I just want to answer this first by saying you can test CTAs, especially in digital marketing. You can do A-B testing. You can try a CTA for a week. Go to Google Analytics, see what happens. Go to HubSpot, see what happens. And then you can find CTAs that work. All the best marketing companies in the world are testing CTAs constantly. So that's, that's one thing to think about. And, and, I, and I would answer the question by saying, yes, absolutely. You have to find the CTA that connects with the story brand. There's not necessarily the, the one size fits all. Um, you can also get feedback from your target market. You have conversations about them, about what they'd like to see. Show them CTAs and ask them, how does this CTA connect with you? Um, you know, some people might not want to click a buy now. They may not be ready to click a buy now. They might want to schedule a call. They might want to, um, you know, learn more uh, in that. I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts, Neil, on, on CTAs and various types of CTAs? I think, I think you answered it well, Tom. I don't, I don't have a lot to add to that. <clears throat> I, I think there's lots of different types of CTAs. Um, some work better than others, and I would encourage uh, testing. It's an easy thing to test. I'd like to get to this one question that um, someone wrote about, does the story brand process work well when selling, selling luxury items yes. or luxury right. status? And, it, and the answer is very much so, because you're, um, you're able to leverage a lot of that internal um, problem uh, in the luxury space, because the internal problem is, uh, let's say you're in the selling landscaping services. Well, you could sell a landscaping service that's going to be the envy of your neighborhood because people want their, do they want their yard to be green? Yes, but they might want even more to have their neighbor say, wow, Joe, your, your landscaping, your lawn looks just, it's the, it's the most beautiful in the neighborhood. Or if you're selling uh, Louis Vuitton, um, you know, handbags, um, one of the principal reasons people buy luxury goods is because of the status that it brings to their life and, and how they feel internally. So yes, short answer is yes. Works for nonprofits. You have to make some adjustments in your, in your language if you're um, running a nonprofit um, because it's not always about buying, it's about engaging uh, donors. So there are some, some tweaks that you have to make for different industries, but in general, the process works. For anything, and, and you know, it's it, it, it's uh, excellent question for from anonymous attendee, <laughs> but that's ex excellent question. And also, um, Alicia has a great question, which we, you know, when we thought about doing this webinar, we know COVID nineteen obviously is happening right now, and we, I, th I think that Neil and I both are in agreement that what works in marketing and what's at the heart of marketing never changes, whether you're in crisis or not. And my thought is that during COVID nineteen, this is more important than ever because people are not only are they researching online, we've seen the numbers in the data from our clients, more and more people are researching online because they're home in front of their computers. They need these fundamental um, marketing approaches more than ever because they, they have to compete more. You've got to find the customers and, and so forth. I mean, and I, I, and Neil, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the COVID-19 issues we're yep. dealing with in marketing and brand and story brand. So for me, uh, and I've been knee deep in this for the last two months um, from a marketing professional perspective, in addition to uh, all of you out there who are dealing it both in your personal lives and in your business. So for me, it's been a lot about uh, pivot strategy. And then if you, can, if you can identify the pivot strategy, then how do you actually message the, uh, the pivot? So, for example, you know, people in the restaurant business have been devastated. Uh, but there's a there's a restaurant in Seattle called uh, Canlis, and if you go to their website, it's just incredible what how they pivoted and how they messaged it. So they were only doing takeout. This was a white linen fine dining establishment, and overnight they went from uh, waiting list, you know, for for days or weeks for reservations to zero people coming through the door. So they pivoted to takeout, but the way they messaged it was unbelievable. They, they messaged, uh, you could not only buy their fine food for takeout, but you could also 
um, have a bottle of their fine wine from their wine cellar. You could also tune into a Zoom video of their piano bar with a live pianist playing while you enjoyed your dinner. And they focused on family time and family meals. So yes, uh, Carrie Ann just put it in the, uh, in the chat. Take a look at that. Um, and they did that pivot within uh within hours or or a day or two and they and they're sold out by you know one o'clock every afternoon every day throughout the entire COVID crisis so it, it's a lot about pivot and it's a lot about how, how you message your pivot and you use the story brand uh framework to to do that messaging this is this is really good this is great great information so we're going to take a few more questions we'll wrap up at the top of the hour um uh, Lonnie, my, my, my friend Lonnie out in California has a question. Um, wish you guys could come up with 10 to 20 questions for a CEO to ask himself or herself to analyze their website. Yeah, that would be interesting. In fact, um, you know, Neil, we could probably do that, get that to Lonnie and, and share it with, with the Vistage Share community in general. Um, uh, you know, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think that getting getting questions to CEOs, really thought-provoking questions, that's one way of getting them to start thinking about this, thinking about the messaging. It also de deals with, um, you know, one of the other questions we had too, is how do, how do we get the boss to buy in? <laughs> yeah, well, one of the things, Tom, you and I have talked about this. I know you've done some of this on webinars in the past, but we could also host a webinar uh, to review websites <clears throat> and kind of hold them up against the the story brand standard and ask the questions, you know, live and in person as we go through the website uh, would be another way to do it. That's, I think, yeah, that's, we'll, we'll get that scheduled and we'll, we'll, we'll let you all know when, when that's ready to go. And in the meantime, Lonnie, yes, we'll give some thought to this and, and I'll have something to you. Um, and we'll, we'll share that. And just so you know that we're going to post this on the resources section of intuitivewebsites.com um, and any other materials that we that come out of this will be posted there as well. Any other questions, folks? Looks like uh, we've got some good positive feedback. Thank you so much for that. And um, if there are no other questions, we'll start to wrap up so you guys can get busy on your story brand work. And of course, reach out to Neil uh, for assistance with that. Reach out to Intuitive Websites. Um, you know, either way we collaborate on, on getting success for you. So, um, let me see if there's any other questions. Okay. Excellent. All right. Really good. Well, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, this will conclude the webinar for today and, uh, you know, make sure you, you subscribe to our email so you can be in tune on future webinars. And of course, share with people, share on, share this webinar and, and share our information with others. So, so more people can get this information as well. Thanks so much, everybody. And don't forget, if you confuse, you'll lose. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.